All right, everybody, we're gonna be working on our carbon cub today. 545 Charlie Charlie. All right, so we have an annual fun fly coming up at the local club, the uh, Kingman Golden Eagles, and we're getting the carbon cub ready. We're gonna go through it and just make sure it's ready. We're gonna do a couple little modifications also. So there's a couple things that we wanted to just change up or, or just add to it. So I'll kind of give you an overview of what we're gonna do. First off, Mary made some really cool seat covers, you know, purely just decorative. But she made these, she, uh, she sewed these up out of neoprene and did some yellow stitching. Uh, so these are really cool and they just literally slip on the seats. So. Yeah, they're, those are prototypes. So I'm still yeah, on these are prototypes. So Mary's still working on them, but they actually fit really good and uh, you can see the bottom's just open, but they, they're really cool. Anyway, got a little, uh, some carbon accent kind of monocoat strip. We're gonna do some uh, um, carbon accent pieces. Again, just some decorative stuff. And the battery tray installation, kind of a contention point on this the electric version of the carbon cup. It's very, very difficult to install. Uh, so we're gonna try to kind of mod this or come up with an easier way. Yeah, we always have a hard time fitting those notches in. Yeah, these little to the, to two the front ears of on the front. Or, yeah. I don't know, but we're gonna try and fiddle with this and maybe come up with something a little better. And then we also have a Castle Creations cap pack. This mounts right after the ESC. And what this does, these capacitors on the cap pack take the load off of the capacitors on the ESC and reduces what's called ripple. Because we, ex we installed a six inch extension off of the ESC, so we have a really big long battery lead coming off the ESC, they recommend you put in a, a cap pack. So we're gonna see if that'll fit under the cowl here. It's pretty low profile, but I'm not sure I have enough room in there. Unfortunately, you can't just mount it anywhere. So this has to be, I think they say, within two inches from the ESC, so it's very specific. So while we have the cowl off, we're gonna be inspecting, just make sure the prop nut is still tight. Uh, while we have that off, we're gonna see if we can fit the cap pack in there. Try to get this thing going and make sure it's okay before we go fly it at the, uh, the annual fly-in. All right, so let's get the spinner off and we're gonna inspect up here, because I don't know if you remember on our Maiden, we did, uh, barely nick the propeller on one of the landings. So that's kind of why I want to take this off. It wasn't a hard hit, it just, it did touch the dirt though. Okay, got the spinner, two little guys. And if everything appears to be tight still, uh, I don't remember what size that was. Oh, it says 964. All right, good eye, Mary, 964. <laughs> <laughs> You're so smart, you forget. All right, so that was tight, so that's good. Let's get our propeller off here. Let me see if I can. Gotta hold the motor. Looks great. So I don't see any slippage. I don't know if you can see the marks. So you can see the star pattern kind of. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it did not slip. Once it grabbed, it was good to go the whole way. That looks good. Cool. So that's kind of what I wanted to check for, slippage. And then uh, back plate obviously looks fine still. I don't see any galling, any weird stuff going on. Cool, very cool. Everything looks good, threads are still good. All right, so, so far so good. All right, so we got uh, the homemade prop balancer here you guys have seen me use. So this little hub that I'm screwing in now, we got from Hobby King, it was like $2. So remember, there's two things you gotta check. So you gotta check first the lateral, and you can see. It's plenty good, so. Just stays there. It pretty much stays, that's very, that's acceptable. And we've got a whole video on how to prop balance. And then what you gotta do is check the, the hub. So what you wanna do is make sure it'll stay basically in any position. So vertical, it stays. stays there, it stays there. So perfectly balanced still, even though you, you can see we nicked it and took off a little paint, but it didn't affect it one bit. It's actually falling that way. So. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm gonna take a little, just uh, maybe even a Sharpie or just a little black paint and just touch that up. Okay, good to go. So the prop is good, let's move on. Let's get the cowl off now, see about that cap pack. So we got these four main screws holding the cowl on. Pretty simple. All right, so we have the cap pack out and the uh, 
uh, cowl off. So this has to get installed in a very, very specific manner. So you can see here, I think it tells you, there it is. Oh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you remove a little section of the wire and then these two terminals, just, it just, the, the wires kind of rest along there and you solder it on. But then it says the power wire is within three inches of the ESC. So basically, this has to go up here because that's about three inches total. Cool. Let's see if we can fit this here. I don't know if we're gonna, but let's cut that zip tie. It has to be like right, there. like right here. And you can see you cut just little notches. You know what? It might fit, guys. Yeah, if you push it. It might fit. So you can see how the terminals right there, yeah. you cut little, just two little spots in the wires and you solder it onto those two posts and it just sits like that. I think, yeah. If you push it a little bit, I mean, cause then it won't be, I don't know. So let's do a trial here with the cowl. So you can see how this works. So, you know, the power goes over the terminals and these four capacitors take the load or they share the load, they don't take the load off, but they share the load with the two capacitors that are on the ESC. So basically you're, you know, you're getting rid of a lot of ripple and the load on the ESC. Now this Castle Talon 90 is one badass ESC. It's super beefy and it's not like there's, it's not like those things are failing, but let's see if we can get this back on there. <laughs> it's always, you kind of got to stretch it on. There you go. Oh yeah, look at, oh. So it's kind of bulging up here so you can tell it, it is hitting. He's just hitting right here. Yep. Yeah, if it was moved a little bit this way. Those caps are just a little tall. Now you can see, and the reason we can't move this ESC is because the wires, we tried mounting this when we built the plane, we tried mounting this on the bottom, and then these just didn't have enough. Yeah, because if this moved to the bottom, then these wires would go through the bottom, and then they're in the way of the battery pack, because that's where the battery pack is to slide in. Oh, you were, okay. That's so these good. have to be up here. All right, guys, so I think our, our hopes and dreams of installing a cap pack are, are gonna be foiled because it pretty much has to go on top here. These caps are just a little too tall. It's bulging into the cowl. A um, Couple reasons why it has to go up here. Remember, you have to install it within three inches of the ESC. So when you measure out three inches, it's, you know, that's it. Yeah. You can see we're at our limit already. Some, some of you guys might be saying, well, well, just put it on the inside. Well, you can't because if it was on the inside of the battery pack hanging down or the inside of this box hanging down, then it gets in the way of the battery because now the, because remember the battery slides all the way up into this box. So you can't have this on the inside. Um, if we, if we moved the ESC to the bottom and then this thing on the side, you run into wire length issues. And yeah, you could extend all this but we don't have the wire right now. And we, I think we, we tried mounting this on the bottom and it wouldn't work. We'll keep, we'll keep this and maybe we'll install it on another project, but I don't think it's gonna, it's just not gonna work on this plane. So we're gonna move on. All right, so we're moving on from the cap pack. Let's do the seats. So we know the seats will work. <laughs> this is a pretty easy mod. We haven't given up on the cap pack. I think we just gotta rethink this out. So let's get the seats out here. We'll show you Mary's, Mary's cool mod in action. She's pretty good with a sewing machine. And I don't even know the first thing about a sewing machine. So, as you can see, they just slip, on. slip right on. Yeah, neoprene's pretty stretchy. Neoprene, got it. Uh, where'd you get Joann's or Hobby Lobby? Which one? I don't, I don't remember. I think, think it might have been Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Yeah. But they sell them at all Joann's. Mike, yeah. I think Michael's too, all those big stores. So Not like I said, these are, these are Mary's prototypes. I think they're pretty awesome for a prototype, Mary. She's kind of worked the yeah. neoprene around. That's I'll it. Figure that one out myself. I think they look great. Especially for your first attempt. Yeah. I think I like this one better. I had to actually sew them into two different pieces because oh, the really? seat wouldn't, uh, you'll see it. I think you might have a high demand for these, Mary. At least the pattern. On that too. All right. I think they look cool. Yeah. yeah, that one fits better. You can see this one. Uh, yeah, that was just one whole piece, and I just sewed a seam. But, but still, work out. Yeah, this when one. When it's in like the plane, when it's seat. in the plane, I don't think you're gonna notice it one bit. All right, let's just put them in real quick and see what they look like with the door closed. Uh, we'll put this 
ugly guy in the back. <laughs> so these are our, you know, our wing leads. Yep. And they still just Velcro down. I think they look awesome. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I do definitely like that. Man, those look cool, Mary. Good job. Those look amazing. So let's put the window and the door, get the full effect. And you know, once the, uh, sorry, I put my head there. You know, once the wing is on, especially when this thing's flying by, you are not seeing these seats. But on the ground, uh, you know, you can walk up to the plane and admire. Yeah, looks pretty good. With the yellow stitching, kind of gets rid of that. Well, it actually does get rid of that cheap plastic shiny look. Now they look like real seats. Nice. Those look great, Mary. Good job. Excellent job, Mary. Thank you. I love them. I think they're perfect. All right, so that mod, done. <laughs> Set those aside. Another thing we wanted to do was try to fix or modify this battery installation. So we got a 5,000 milliamp Rhino. I don't know if you watched our other video, but we have put a thumb screw in right here. And that silver line is a visual aid to when you're at that silver line, you know that the battery is clipped in. The battery tray, sorry. So here's our thumb screw. These are M3s by the way, and I think that's a 10. Yeah, M3 by 10. And we put a little piece of fuel tubing to act as like a spring, uh, excuse me, a spring washer. You don't have much room here. So this definitely helps in installation. You got the thumb screw and it helps a lot. So uh, we linked those in um, that video. Yeah, we'll link it again. We can link it again. <laughs> um, so this is the tricky part. When the wing is on and your cowl is on, you have no light coming through here. So this is dark and you can't see the little tab holes. Yeah, and they're just set it's, a little awkward. It's very, very interesting to say the least a lot of people hate it so much they just convert the gas so you're like right now <laughs> we might when the cowl is on you can't you can see it but when right now i can actually look down there and i can see the tabs and it's still not fitting huh you have to lift it just a tad yeah and that's the thing i can't tell it's like one or two millimeters there. nope so it's still it's see i can't even get it in best case scenario this is well, the most frustrating part and probably the main reason why I haven't flown this since the Maiden. Because the battery won't yeah. fit. And once the wings are on, forget about it. Yeah. I mean, you'll sit here for 20 minutes just trying to get the battery in. All right, Mary's on it. Mary's she on claims it. she knows what to do. Oops, I had it too high. So this right here, I don't know if you can see it, but this right here, is, you see how it's flush? The notches are about like one to two millimeters higher up here. So this we piece need, needs to be higher? Yeah, we need, well, we need a little plate down here. I think a popsicle stick needs to be glued on? Yeah, even even probably a little less than that. But the plate is completely flush, so you, you have to lift it, and then that's why you have so much problem trying to put it in there. Yeah, because you're lifting, and, and you can't lift from the yeah. The end that makes sense to lift from because this is the whole battery is under the dash. So you're actually lifting from the back and you know the battery's cantilevered in your thumbs. Yeah. It's right. it's very difficult. Start with a popsicle stick, I think. So let's try our theory here. If this works. I'm a genius. Well, we got a, a square stirrer here. Okay. Let's start with that actually. The holes that these tabs notch into are higher and the floor doesn't even need to be perfectly on there. So yeah, we're gonna CA it, hit it with some kicker. All right, we got our little strip, piece of cardboard down. There it goes, it's kicking off. You can see it turns white. Okay, make sure that's all dry. Yep. You can see we just put an extra ledge on there. You know, we just talked about that, but let's see if raising that up helped. It. Helped. I think you're right. I think I that's hope it's what. It's not it, too high. Let's see if this just goes right in like it should. Try not looking at it like you normally. Yeah. Would have. There we go. So you just got to wiggle it sideways to get into the actual motor box. Oh yeah, so much easier. Slid right in. Went right in. 
So I think we're on to something here. All right, so, so just slipping it in, fiddle with it. Just gotta get it into the motor box. Those aren't, I'm not playing with the tabs yet. There we go. Yep, you don't have to lift it anymore because that tab we glued on already lifts it for you. You just gotta wiggle it left and right, which is really easy. Right in, and then you got the thumb screw. That's easy. Look at that. Okay. All right, so I think that's way easier, guys. So that was a good mod. Just gluing that little piece on because it raises those tabs up to where they should be and it slides right in. Wow, big difference. All right, so our last little mod, we got our carbon accent pieces. We're gonna put one on the door here and uh, if we have enough, maybe on that back door wall. So we're gonna just basically put a piece on and then trim around the magnets and the little door handle. I think that's gonna be the easiest way. All right, so we're just gonna put a piece on there and trim the excess off. Now I'm gonna use one of these edges as the edge. There's no sense in cutting four mm -hmm. edges, so if we use it, then we only have to cut three edges. And the wood did have a rough back to it, so it wasn't the smoothest of wood. I need a, a knife here. So, not bad. <laughs> Couple little imperfections, but this film, if you've ever worked with it, is so thin. So I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. We got the cool. magnets cut out looks for cool. a carbon cub. Looks we got cool. some carbon. <laughs> some carbon. <laughs> and then the handle works great. That actually, the slot worked out the best, to be honest with you. <laughs> Cutting a round hole in a, yeah. something mm -hmm. that thin not and delicate is very difficult. Oh yeah, look at that, when it's on the plane. I think it looks really cool. We'll get the iron out. All right guys, so we have a bunch of, uh, of the carbon strip left. We're gonna try to put it on the back wall there. So the back door has uh, some fake carbon too. It looks cool, I think. Um, what we did though, because we're gonna match this window pillar line, I got my little angle finder and we figured out this is a 55 degree angle. So we just put it up in the window jam the window frame, mm -hmm. matched the angle, came up with 55 degrees, traced 55 degrees back on the back side. So when we cut that tri little triangle off, it's gonna match the window angle and it'll just kind of run down under the dashboard. And then the rest, I think we'll just run it as far back. And conveniently, this already is the same width. Look at that. So really the most critical part is up front there. Yeah. All right, there we go. So now I'll just kind of work it down. Like I said, this wood wasn't the smoothest of wood. There we go, guys. That looks pretty cool, I think. Kind of fitting for a carbon cub. All right, let's put Mary's seats in there. Get a final look of this, final products. We got the ug ugly seat in the back. Prototype A. <laughs> Put our uh, top window in. And we never glued either of these because these magnets are so strong. That looks cool. I don't know if you can see the carbon in there. Maybe you can try to show it through the window, but Mary's seats, yeah, it's, it's all black. But let's pull the door down and see if we can get a view of So we successfully did a few of the things on our list. We got Mary's seat covers installed, we did some carbon accent pieces, and we modded the battery tray, which works so much better. Just glue on a little strip of popsicle stick, and that seemed to be the trick. And then the thumb screw, which we did in another video, but we'll link, all, we'll link that too. That alone seemed to make the battery way easier to deal with, because remember, once these wings are on, it is a pain in the butt. And then you put the cowl on and it's dark in there now. So you can't look through these holes to help you line up the tabs. So 
this should help us a lot. Should make flying this plane a lot more enjoyable. And the propeller checked out, everything checked out. Really the only thing we couldn't do was the cap pack. I haven't given up on it yet. Might just have to redesign the motor box or extend some wires. But for now, unfortunately, we could not do the cap pack. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed our maintenance and upgrading of the Carbon Cub. If you got any questions um, of what we did or just about the Carbon Cub in general, just always ask us in the comments. We're more than happy to help. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Mary's on Instagram posting pictures and trying to respond. So thanks again, everybody.